Hello, so in this video we are going to complicate the previous task a bit. So instead of check if given parentheses expression is correctly closed, we will do check if given um, parentheses brackets expression is correctly closed. And the only difference will be that we can alternate brackets expressions and parentheses expressions inside the same expression. So for example, this expression should return true this expression should also return true, but also this expression should return true. But an expression like this should return false. So we will have to modify our correctly closed function. And um, let's think about it uh, a bit before writing a test and implementing it. So see that we could follow the same structure and add to a pair of additional counters, which would go something like this, brackets, and number of opening brackets and number of closing brackets. And correspondingly, we would have to add more if statements here, like if C equals close bracket, then we increment the equivalent counter. The problem is that this if else structure would uh, complicate. And believe me or not, this algorithm is not as easily uh, extendable as the one that I'm about to show you. But before that, think about what would happen if our task was even more complicated. We, what if we had to take into account also curly braces? So let's say we complicated even more and an expression like this is also correct. But don't think about it for now, just believe me that this is probably not the way to solve this problem. As you can also see, the new R correctly closed, uh, which we are about to uh, implement or modify, returns true for all the previously written tests. I mean, all previous tests should work. And also there are some other expressions that for the previous implementation should not return true, while for this implementation, they would have to uh, do so. So it's basically our, the set we are looking for, the set of expressions is a superset of the previous set, right? So for now, let's not think about how to implement it to satisfy all these conditions. Let's try to rebuild this function uh, so that the tests that we have still work, still pass. So we will use a stack that we implemented in one of the previous videos. Uh, let me um, include it here. And let's see what we need. We will not need the counters. We will still need the loop and the uh, final expression will be a bit different than uh, the statement. Uh, we will create a stack and we'll try to look at such an example. What happens if we have this example? It would be cool to go one by one exactly as we did before and we will keep pushing the opening parentheses onto the stack. So we'll push this one and then push this one. But we'll go one by one. So we are here, we have one element on, on the on the stack. And here we encounter a closing parentheses. So we have to check if the previously pushed element onto the stack is an opening parentheses. If it is, we can go next. But before that, we will remove this element from the stack. So we are here, our stack is empty. And we go again, we push the opening parentheses. And then we go right again, and we see that the previously pushed element is the left parentheses. We are an element which is a closed parentheses, so we can cancel them out. And if the stack at the end is empty, we return true. So this is a bit, um, might look like a bit of magic, but let's try to do it this way. Return stack empty. And here we will do something like this. If C equals opening parentheses, then we will push this onto the stack. Okay, else, if else, we will just stack pop the element from the stack. Uh, here we have a problem with the, how we require, how we import the stack. And here we have the first problem. So well, some of the tests already pass, but here we have two tests that fail because we throw an error coming and it comes from the method called pop. Yes, so as we can see, uh, we implemented the stack before and we said that if there's nothing to be popped, 
that is if the stack if the stack is empty we return we throw stack under fall okay and it happens if the first of the elements is a closing parenthesis so this is a very special case uh, we should check if the stack is empty and then um, if it's empty we should if stack is empty we should just return false because it means that we encountered a closing parenthesis first without any opening parenthesis before that so and yeah it passes all the tests that's great uh, so here we have our minimal implementation for our collectively closed using stack and now we could think about how to modify this implementation so that we take into account brackets as well. So let's try to write a failing test. I'm very curious if this will be enough, but let's try to write something like this. Returns false. Well, it should return true for such an expression for a clo two correctly closed brackets. It returns false for now, but it should return the true. So what happens here? We see that we should push onto the stack, not only if it's an opening parentheses, but also if it's an opening bracket. And it works. Now we can think about a failing test. Um, so let's say for a thing like this, it will probably work because we will go, we will push these two elements because we get twice into this if statement. And then uh, we will pop, once we get to this element, we pop the previous one. And once we get to the last, to the fourth element, fourth character, we remove the previous one and the stack will be empty at the end. So this expression should work. So this is not the test that we need, but uh, let's try to think about maybe a test like, like this should probably not work. Let me give me a second. Um, maybe something like this. So this should return false, but it will probably not return the false uh, because we will push these two elements and then on the next element, we will pop the stack from the stack and then on this element, we will pop from the stack as well. Let me write a test for it. So um, it returns false for and yes it returns false it fails so now we have to think what to do I think this this if statement should remain the same that is when we encounter a closing bracket or parentheses and the stack is empty then we should return false but the condition should be different on the pop so we should pop the element from the stack only if it's a matching opening character that is if stack last element peak equals mat we'll get it we'll write a cool function here get matching character or opening character to this since c is the just for the sake of readability we would we could write closing character equals C and we could define a sub function a nested function like this function closing character and if closing character equals this we return this if closing character equals this we return an opening bracket. Maybe we don't need this naming here as we uh, clearly in the uh, signature of the, in the signature of the function we, uh, we call the argument, the input argument as we call it closing character. So it should be enough. In this case, if the last push element equals the opening character for the closing character, in this case, we should pop. So it works. And I think this should work. Yeah, let's let's write a more complicated test. Try to write another one, which will be way bigger expression. So maybe let's do something like this.
here we go. Uh, our implementation is ready to go. And even though we um, made our task a bit more complicated, our, our implementation is not very complex. And imagine now if you want to add the um, requirement for curly braces too, we would just have to add this line here, right? And, and another condition inside the if statement. But so far so good. And you can see that stack is a great data structure for parsing text, right? And checking some conditions like uh, closing parentheses, brackets, curly braces. This could be used in many applications like this IDE itself. Like if I don't close parentheses correctly in WebStorm, then I get this error, which is a bit annoying. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's saying that a comma or parentheses is expected. So uh, as you can see, I wonder if uh, WebStorm is, uses stacks for that. But the goal of this exercise was to see an example application of stacks. So hopefully you learned something and uh, see you in the next video.